Shove it, man! Alright, it's the leader of the smack pack back with another attack. I'm still working away in a far, far away place, and somehow I miss sitting in my four cornered room staring at the slap nuts in the corner. But I'll be back soon. In the meantime, it's Ring of the Hawk Season 4, and it's another guy today who has the potential to knock Rey Mysterio off the top spot. Today's video was also a Patreon request by CJ Haas. If you want to make your girl pass, get her on Patreon and show her ass. Okay, it's Jushin Thunder Liger. Is his mask supposed to be a tiger? Quite looking forward to this run because there's meant to be stuff in here that was the first time of US audience seeing some of the things he did. So let's see what all the fuss is about. Match 1. Starcade 1991. Battle Bowl Tag Qualifiers. The world's strongest man, Bill Kazmaier, teams with Jushin Thunder Liger versus the Dime Drawer, Mike Graham, and Diamond Dallas Page DDP. Ned Flanders is the first man to score a knockdown. Liger is also hip tossed away. Unfortunately, Liger's very first move in WCW is a botch, as the head scissors looks terrible. Although that one could probably be blamed on Graham. What can't be blamed on Graham is literally the following move as Liger tries some more athleticism but instead he just slops to the ground and Mike Graham has to pretend that it was a pin. Liger's embarrassed and has to tag out. I would be too. Worst start to an episode of Ring of the Hawk of all the times. Who would have expected it from this guy? Page destroys Bill Kazmaier for a while before tagging Liger back in. Let's see if Liger can improve. Page Russ and Leg sweeps him straight away for a two count. Jushin Thunder Liger literally lands a spinning heel kick and Graham is tagged back in. The pace has increased now. Liger scores a nice kick to the head and he's able to hit a springboard splash back into the ring and then he just tags back out. Lots of inexperience in this match right here. Liger eventually returns against Ned Flanders. He does a slow motion drop toe hold and applies a surfboard submission on him. He doesn't tap. Mike Graham wakes up and has his own version of the drop toe hold into a Boston Crab. Liger can't be submitted and pin attempts are traded. Graham and Liger start wrestling like it's the opening minute of a match, but it's not. Maybe they wanted to redo their original botch fest. Cool move now as they both lock up, but instead Liger does a rolling kick, shades a big viscera. Jushin tries his best to wake up a dead crowd with some of the quickest kicks of all time. This works, at least for a moment. Kazmaier wants to do a double team with Liger, but they get confused and Jushin Thunder Liger asks for him to put Graham back down. Not a dime was drawn in this match. Mike Graham misses his attack in the corner and falls out of the ring. And then absolute madness as Liger flies out of the ring with a flip sent on. In 1991 in the States, I had no idea this was going on. Liger gets him back in the ring and lands a middle rope moonsault. The pin is broken up. Kazmaier and Liger are able to work together now and they take out Graham before Kazmaier picks up his own partner and presses him above his head and then throws him at Diamond Dallas Page and that gets the free. Have to say, I'm shocked and impressed that this happened that year. Yes, the start of this match was terrible, but they did make up for it, and Jushin tried his best to fire up a dead crowd and get some dimes out of Graham. Great work, it's a B as far as debuts go, and it would have been an A if not for the botches at the start. Match 2, later that same night, Battle Bowl. Thunder Liger desperately runs down the ramp like a lost puppy following his new owner, Bill Kazmaier. He's followed down the ramp by stunning Steve Austin, so who's the bitch now? Liger continues hanging around with Kazmaier during this match, they are now best friends I guess. I barely saw Liger for the majority of this match before him and Morton fight in the connecting ring and it becomes really good for a second. Morton's dive is turned into a power slam and Liger immediately sent on him. Liger keeps going and he quickly hits the SIE moonsault and then he climbs to the top and does a Rana of sorts. The spinning heel kick doesn't connect cleanly, but the clothesline does. Unintentionally though, this eliminates both Liger and Morton. The match is won by the icon Steve Borden. Apparently there was another elimination earlier on that Liger was involved with, but I didn't see it. Jushin left a lasting impression in this match, and that is what's important, it's a C. Match 3, Super Brawl 2 opener. Light heavyweight title, flying Brian Pillman vs Jushin Thunder Liger the champion. If you're wondering, Thunder Liger won the title from Pillman on a house show and he became the second ever champion, but he did nothing with it. Really impressive quickness without actually doing much for both guys, they're very evenly matched. Brian with the first big move, a head scissors out the corner and the drop kick which clears the ring. Brian kicks him through the ropes, but the ref won't let him dive. Back in the ring, Liger with a single leg take down and a leg lock. Pillman kicks him off. They start running everywhere frantically. Liger hits a moonsault. Pillman spills out the ring with Liger doing a dive fake out which gets the fans on his side. Surprisingly high amount of submissions in this match. Pillman keeps blocking the surfboard. Big smashing drop kick in the corner from Liger. Pillman ain't hurt though and he almost beats Liger with a crucifix. Liger with a nice pinging attempt of his own now. Pillman is put in a figure four and Liger and Pillman take turns boxing at each other. The crowd chant USA so I guess they've turned on Jushin. Speaking of turned, the submission is turned over. 
Brian does a head scissors, but he can't keep the advantage as he's sent for the ring as Lyka dives off the top of a big flip sent off. They must have been filling their nappies of excitement back in 1991, I can only imagine. I was only a baby, so I was probably filling mine too. Pillman comes back to the ring with a springboard clothesline, and then wow. He suplex Luger out of the ring. It's Brian's turn to fly off the top now of a crossbody. Jesse Ventura on commentary calls this the greatest high-flying match he's ever seen. Pillman misses the follow-up dive and hits a fence, but Liger can't capitalise either as his dive is countered. But Pillman's dive is also countered with a drop kick. We're completely even here. Double spinning heel kick now. When they make it back up, there's a snap slam. Liger then retaliates with a bridging German suplex. Jushin can't hit the superplex and Pillman hits him with a crossbody for another two. Brian Pillman cannot hit the Hurricanrana as it's turned into a powerbomb for a two. Really weird powerbomb reversal into another pin now. This match is truly breathless. Big meeting of the minds in the middle of the ring now. When they make it back up, Liger does manage to hit a superplex, which is just a two count. Jushin tries to finish him off with the splash, which misses. Brian immediately rolls him into a nice pin for the three. What a match. For 1991, this one was so far ahead of its time, you don't even realise how ridiculous it was. It got the crowd on their side with no help from WCW, so it's an A from the hall. Match 4, Clash of the Champions 19, tag title tournament match. Pillman and Liger are now a team, and they'll take on... Beef Wellington and Chris Benoit. Benoit looks like he's taken some of Wellington's hair and layered it on his own head, then pissed on it. We start off with Piss Benoit and Thunder Liger. Benoit hits a nice fireman's carry throw. Liger responds with a Northern Lights throw. Jushin continues on top with some nice arm drags. Both men miss drop kicks and they tag out. After a while, Liger gets to fight Wellington who puts him in a submission and tags Benoit again. The pace quickens and Benoit hits the Inzaguri kick. Wellington gets back in again and he simply throws Liger out the ring like a piece of trash. Beef Wellington misses his following dive like a moron. Back in the ring, it's time for Liger with the monkey flip and he tags Flying Brian. This Wellington guy is just the biggest moron of the match. He throws himself out of the ring and that allows Liger to dive on him. We get back to the ring where Liger's crucifix is turned into Samoan Drop, which is completely unacceptable in the Hawks' opinion. Samoan Drop should just be saved for Samoans and fat guys, and Wellington is neither. Not much else to say other than an acai moonsault on Chris Benoit in 1992, and the crowd come completely undone at witnessing that. Their thongs are filled with happiness. Unfortunately, his next move is a strange wacky dance, the worst German suplex of all time on Wellington. The crowd groan. We get to the finish of the match, and Liger has to carry Wellington, but instead he just sort of slops down on top of him. Jushin wins with the moonsault. Bit of a mixed bag here. Other than the acai moonsault, there wasn't really that much. You would have expected a little bit more. It's a D. Match 5, Great American Bash 1992. Tag tournament quarterfinal match. Flying Brian and Jushin Thunder Liger versus Nikita Koloff and Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. We start with a double handshake. Pillman will start this match with Koloff. They have a really good opening exchange. I hope Liger starts this one well too. Pillman tags in Liger, who joins with a dive. He wrenches on Koloff's arm and tags straight back out. I guess he didn't start as well. Somehow, Kolov is isolated. He no-sells Liger's offense, who tries a bit harder and gets a knockdown for drop kick and a shoulder block. Brian Pillman loses the advantage and Steamboat is tagged. He snap mirrors Liger into the match and smashes Pillman and Liger together. Jushin dumps his nappy of fear and runs from the ring. The match slows now because everyone is confused about who the legal man actually is. Liger eventually rejoins and does a double drop kick with his partner. The referee forgets to count. Kolov rejoins for slam on Liger and a Kolov spinning elbow. It's been a while, but we do get the fast kicks from Liger in this one, quickly followed by a front slam and a moonsault. Shockingly, it's just a two. Jushin isn't playing around and he quickly puts Steamboat up and hits a freaking tombstone pole driver. Just a two. And a rolling sent on for another two. This is so ahead of its time with all these kickouts. This could definitely be a match in 2023. Kolov gets the tag off a back suplex and he completely turns the match on Liger with elbow drops. When Steamboat gets in, he hits three bat breakers straight into a power slam, all without release. Hillman has to break the pin up. Nikita Kolov and Steamboat with some double team offense on Liger. I'm enjoying this one, lots of fun moves. Ricky Steamboat hits a top rope smack to the face and a jackknife pin for a two. Suddenly, out of nowhere, Liger kicks Steamboat and scrambles out. He is no longer stuck in this match. Brian Pillman continues the match. Later on, he holds Steamboat so Liger can hit a missile dropkick. He also does a cartwheel into a bad looking crossbody. It looks terrible. Kolov joins the match, but Liger won't back down from the big man. He's soon forced to, though, when he's hit with a big diving shoulder block. Jushin once again escapes and tags out. There's another period late into this match where the speed of the match goes through the roof. Really weird. Really impressive for them to find another gear 20 minutes into a match. The match breaks down as Steamboat rolls through on a crossbody and that's how this one ends. 
Pretty fun. You can just see that Jushin Thunder Liger has an extra hidden gear. This one's a C. Match 6, WCW Saturday Night, Jushin Thunder Liger vs Brad Armstrong. We start out with JR on commentary revealing that people are starting to get sick of people diving off the top rope. Wow, poor guy, he must be suicidal two decades later. Anyway, they won't be allowed to dive off the top rope in this match as it must be battled under WCW rules, though this match completely sucks. Apparently you're still allowed to run off the ropes whilst holding your opponent's arm to do an arm drag though. Liger follows it with a head scissors which we haven't actually seen much of him doing. Armstrong stops the offence with drop kick and a nice headlock takeover. He moves on to do a nice spinning leg lock, you don't see it executed like that anymore. Liger fights it off with an enziguri. He throws a bunch more kicks and boots Brad out of the ring. He hits a drop kick through the ropes. I was confused if he's actually allowed to dive at this point in the match given the special rules. He doesn't dive anyway and Liger suplexes him back into the ring. Armstrong continues the submission game in the ring which doesn't work and Liger back suplexes him. Brad Armstrong responds with a flawless Russian leg sweep but he wastes too much time on the pin gorming out and he doesn't make a cover. Liger kicks out when he eventually does. Imagine someone having a Russian leg sweeper as a finisher in 2023. The wrestlers start frantically trading pinfalls but none of them are good enough. The bell rings and they say it's a time limit draw. The crowd cheer. We don't normally get that, maybe the crowd hated this match and they were glad that it was over. Well, I didn't hate it, it was fine. It was as fine as fine could be, it's a D. Match 7, Saturday night. This one's just a squash match, so you've got to keep it brief or you'll knock out my teeth. It's Jimmy Garvin vs Jushin Thunder Liger. Very slow starts this for some reason. Garvin beats Liger down in the corner, he gets a one count and turns around into a couple of Liger drop kicks. A scoop slam gets Jushin Thunder and Liger a two count. This match is weird. Garvin does the same move back to it. Suddenly Liger goes nuts. He hits the rolling viscera kick, a front slam and a moonsault. And that's how the match ends. It's a D from the Hawk. Match 8. Saturday night. Another job match. But don't worry, there aren't many in this run. Jushin Thunder Liger vs Crisp Sullivan. Sullivan is like a brown haired Hulkster. Liger slams him and nails the scent on. The jobber battles back with punches and a scoop slam. He does the funniest slow motion elbow drop I've ever seen. It's not exactly the people's elbow. Liger randomly picks him up and power bombs him, but no pin is made. Instead, another slam is made and Liger connects for second rope sent on, which almost made Jeff Hardy dump in his nappy. Liger seems hesitant or just bored. I don't think he's allowed to jump from the top rope. He randomly hits a power driver instead. Yet again, no pin is made. Liger does a bad looking middle rope crossbody for a two count. The spinning heel kick looks like it barely connects and the jobber falls out the ring. Why is this match still going? Jushin hits him with a block out of the ring. Back in the ring now, Liger with a dodgy slam and he wins it with the middle rope moonsault. It just seems annoying and pointless that he can't come off the top, so instead he does everything from the second rope so it makes his offence somehow worse. Now that's not Liger's fault, so I don't know, it's a C, at least they were varying in the moves. Match 9, Starcade 1992, Battle Bowl Qualifier. Dr. Death, Steve Williams teams up the icon Steve Borden to take on Eric Watts and Jushin Fund and Liger. Oh great, so it sounds like they're completely screwed them. Liger and Sting will start here. Sting shows his athleticism at a young age. He is in excellent shape here. Dr. Death gets the tag. He can't seem to catch Liger who runs away and tags out. Eric Watts loses for a while before Liger makes a blind tag. He kicks and chops at Dr. Death. He does some pointless athleticism in the corner and randomly, comically runs straight into a clothesline. Sting is back in and he destroys Liger in the corner. That's just a two. Jushin can barely even manage a sunset flip in this match. Dr. Death comes back in and he drops Liger across the ropes. Sting eventually misses a splash and he quickly tags Dr. Death. It doesn't really matter because Liger barely moved. Steve Williams is one scary looking man at this point in his career. He's trying to tear Liger apart. Jushin looks for a sleeper and the doctor quickly back suplexes him. This is complete dominance. Liger finally manages a bulldog but all he can do is tag Eric Watts to zero crowd reaction. This guy looks like a complete goof. Steve Williams wins with a stun gun. Liger can't even bother to break up the pin. I can't really blame him, I wouldn't have bothered either. It's an S. Match 10, two and a half years later, debut Nitro episode, also first ever match on Nitro. So it's weird seeing wrestlers in a shopping mall. Do you think someone's going to dive off the lifts? It's Jushin Thunder Liger versus Flying Brian. It's good to see these two back together. Quickly, Liger hits a rolling kick in the corner. There's almost a botch though as Liger does a moonsault for a second. It didn't look like he was going to be able to get all the way over. Pillman battles back of a head scissors out of the corner. He tries to do a diving one now, which looks horrible for some reason. A bit later on, Liger drops Pillman down and puts on a surfboard hold. I love this move, but Liger's shoulders are definitely down whilst he's doing it. Another head scissors takedown for Pillman before he's sent from the ring. Liger quickly rolls off the apron on top of him. 
This causes the crowd to chant USA. Jushin Thunder Liger tries to suplex him back into the ring, but instead the opposite happens. Pillman now dives off the top to the outside. As they come back to the ring, Liger makes him fall in his nutsack and hits the superplex for a two count. Nobody can stay on top here. Liger's next dive is countered with a drop kick. Of course, Liger responds straight away with a powerbomb. Change of pace now because Jushin Thunder Liger is actually able to follow that move up with a Frankensteiner. It's just a two count. That's enough though and Pillman does a tornado DDT and then moments later Liger wins with a wacky pin. Slightly disappointing and unvaried, this one's a D. Now due to the way the scoring system works on Ring of the Hawk, we wouldn't normally count the next match for grading, but we say shut up or I'll smack you one. This is a pretty short run and I thought this match would interest the squad. Match 11, WCW main event, Jushin Thunder Liger vs Eddie Guerrero. The commentators state that this match will determine who will challenge Dean Malenko on the next episode of Nitro. Jushin and Eddie do a lot of twisting and turning, as Dusty Rhodes says on commentary. Eddie starts drowning in the surfboard stretch. Now Eddie gets tossed with a monkey flip, but he lands on his feet. Liger with a dragon whip out the corner, and then Eddie with a hurricanrana to counter. But Liger then takes control of a rolling wheel kick to send Eddie to the floor, and then dives on him not too long after. Eddie works on Jushin's leg to keep him from flying, but that leg connects to the side of Eddie's head with an enziguri. Now Eddie counters Jushin Liger's bomb with a German suplex with a bridge, but that's just a two count. Eddie plants Liger on his head with a power bomb of his own, but Liger kicks out at two again. Eddie works over Jushin with a grapevine hold on his leg, and after Eddie gets Jushin into a gory special, Liger rolls him into a two count. Liger now with a normal power bomb on Guerrero. That once again doesn't end the match, well it was just a normal power bomb, would you expect? Liger stops Eddie from a top rope attempt with a superplex, but Eddie gets the shoulder up. Very back and forth this match. Jushin with a standing switch and then Eddie does the same, but then Jushin drops Eddie on his head with a German. Liger attempts his brain buster, but Eddie says no in Spanish and English and gives Liger a brain buster of his own. Eddie makes sure Liger is down and then hits Liger with the frog splash and he gets the free count. Great match, entertaining, commentary was great, crowd was on fire, let's give it a B. For a random WCW event, this match should have been on pay-per-view or something. Match 12, Starcade 1995 opener. Chris Benoit vs Jushin Thunder Liger with Sonny Ono. They're both flying through the air like leaves caught in the wind of your girl's ass. Liger takes out Benoit and he's getting booed by this pro-American crowd. Both men return to the ring, Liger's still wrestling a good match with his head scissors and a rolling kick. Benoit finally gets him down with a big turtle whirl. Not for long though, because Liger swishes out of a powerbomb and hits a beautiful suplex on Benoit, who bails from the ring. Benoit is smart enough to evade the dive though. The pace slows now with Benoit in charge. The dragon suplex gets Chris Benoit a two count. Liger responds with probably the most painful looking surfboard submission I've ever seen. Eventually Benoit gets rid of him with an electric chair drop. They do the tombstone pile driver reversal spot, but instead it ends up in a front slam for some reason. Liger's very slow taking advantage of that one, and Benoit superplexes him. Chris Benoit then misses the diving headbutt. And for only the second time this video, we get that funny Liger taunt. Jushin does a set out powerbomb, but barely tries with the pin cover, which is just two because of that. He keeps going for Brain Buster for another two. This fires Chris Benoit up, who hits two German suplexes in a row, followed by a powerbomb. Chris Benoit connects with a diving headbutt, but Kevin Sullivan is here dressed as a giant chicken or something. That distracts Benoit. And really and truly, that ends up costing Benoit the match, as he turns around into one of the ugliest, scruffiest pins of all time. A really good match up into that blown ending spot. Too many matches with bad spots in them. It's not 1992 anymore and you can't get away of blurring it like that. Best I can give him is a B. That blown spot at the end killed it for me. Match 13, Nitro. Jushin Thunder Liger vs Dean Malenko. Jushin and Malenko fill each other out with some excellent chain wrestling to kick off the match. Liger gives Malenko an inziguri to kick off his head. The crowd starts to pop and I thought it was for the match, but as you can see, Ric Flair starts styling and profiling his way down the ring with women on his arms. Jushin Liger means business and he drops a brain buster on Dean, but it's just a two count. The man of a thousand holds locks Liger in about a few of those for a few minutes until Liger gets a rope break. Malenko locks in the hold again, but Liger gets back up and delivers a handspring back headbutt. Just looks stiff as a board. Malenko with a cartwheel shot into the corner, and as Malenko is sat on the top rope, Liger instead drop kicks Dean to the floor off the top. Jushin Liger soars through the air to the floor of a dive. Bandera spot from Liger, but this leads to Malenko giving Jushin a big top rope gut buster. Jesus. Malenko's ankle looked like it was about to snap in half. Cool pin counter from Liger now, who counters an alley oop attempt into a mounted cover. Fast paced maneuvering from both men, but Malenko inevitably gets the advantage and hits Liger with a Tiger Driver for the victory. 
Solid matchup, besides the random cutaways to Ric Flair. This match was not bad at all, and these two are very entertaining. It's not going to be a B for bad, but it's a B for better. Match 14, WCW Saturday Night. Jushin Liger versus Steve Dull. More like Steve Dull, am I right? Jushin with the fiery offense in the beginning with a flying back elbow. Steve sends Liger away of a snap suplex and starts firing away of the rights. Liger sends Dull into the corner and hits him with the wheel kick, and then drops Dull with a not Dull superplex from the top. Liger takes flight now of a swan dive splash and that's the three. I mean, nothing really happened. It's a typical old school squash match. It's a bit late for that in this run. It's an S. Match 15, Slamboree 1996. Jushin Thunder Liger vs. Conan. WCW United States title match. Conan's the champion. Liger and Conan try to pin each other like starfish in the beginning. Liger eventually with a rolling senton on Conan. Sonny Ono starts throwing some kicks to Conan on the outside and has no effect. Then Liger with a baseball slide to the face and then a dive onto Conan to follow this up. This matchup is very technical, as most of the early going is some decent mat wrestling, and Sonny Ono just yells on the outside. Jushin and Conan start exchanging palm strikes on each other, and then Liger hits the rolling kick on Conan in the corner. Now Jushin places Conan on the top and drops him with a superplex. Soon after, he climbs the top rope and hits a splash, and Conan kicks out at two. Kick to the gut and a big fisherman buster on Conan, but it's only a two count. Jushin looks to end this one as he lifts Conan up and drops him with the Liger bomb, but Conan once again kicks out at two. Liger gets caught with a kick when he dives off the top and then Conan hits what the commentators call Splash Mountain, but Conan calls it the power drop. Either way, Conan picks up the win and retains his belt. This match was very competitive. I wish Conan maybe got a little bit more offense in to make this win a little bit more believable, but it was still a decent mid-card title encounter. I'll give it a C. Match 16, Starcade 1996, Jushin Liger vs Rey Mysterio Jr. Jushin and Rey fill each other out to start this classic. Commentary tell us that Liger has a brain tumour removed six months ago, and yet he's back in the ring already. What a legend he is. Liger is manhandling Ray as if he was Kane or something. I thought this was a cruiserweight belt, but as I wonder that, Juice and Jackknife Ray were right on his head. Super awesome sequence of counters and flips from both men, and the sequences conclude with a hurricane the outside and a 6 foot 9 reversion from Liger. Ray tries to suplex Liger back into the ring, but then Jushin just lifts Ray up and suplexes him back down to the floor. Jushin gets into the ring to break the count, but then he gives Ray a jackknife on the floor and gets right back in to try and get a count out of victory. Ray pushes Jushin off the top rope and then he misses a diving dropkick. Thunder Liger then splits Ray into two with a total world backbreaker. Ray responds by spiking Liger down with DDT and then hits a springboard moonsault on him. But just like his spine, it's only two. Ray attempts a springboard attempt, but Liger with agility catches Ray midair with a drop kick for a two. Liger then hits the monkey flip and also a spinning wheel kick. Mysterio is set up on the top rope, but he's able to hit a dragon whip on Jushin this time. Ray with the expert evasion skills on Liger now as he hits the drop kick through the ropes and a pitch perfect springboard moonsault down to the floor. Ray starts hitting some knees on Liger, who's draped on the middle rope, and then with a guillotine leg drop from the top rope, Ray almost gets the win, but Liger gets a rope break. Nobody's home when Ray hits the springboard, so Liger takes control and hits a diving headbutt, but Ray has more fight left in him. Liger stops the springboard hurricanera attempt by landing on his feet and hitting the rolling kick on Ray, and this allows him to drop Ray with the Liger bomb to defeat Mysterio. This was a great match, they had awesome chemistry, and despite that awkward landing at the end, this matchup was pure quality, giving it a B. Match 17, Nitro, NJPW title and WCW World Cruiserweight title match. Jushin Liger challenges for Ultimo Dragon's belts. The Dragon currently holds 9 title belts, but he's only wearing one tonight. Wait, so this match is for both titles, why doesn't he have both? Dragon and Liger start with some explosive offense, which ends with Dragon getting a bat break for his troubles. Jushin with the cartwheel Ken headbutt and then a cannibal senton on Dragon for the two count. Jackknife powerbomb from Thunder now, and he pulls Dragon up by his mask, but then Dragon counters with a turtle wheel bat breaker on Liger. Like with the crash landing on Dragon with the suicide dive on the floor. The match kind of trundles along, it's nothing you haven't seen before. We get a brain buster for a two count in the ring. Ultimo takes Liger on the top rope and he sits on top of Thunder's head and then sends him away with a Hurricanrana. Dragon takes control of the match with a Tiger suplex and he retains both of the titles, even though only one of the belts was even able to be shown. The match was very quick and simple with some decent cruiserweight action, but why did the belts even have to be on the line? Let's give it a C. Well, seemingly that one annoyed Liger so much that he took his ball and went home. But he did return for one final run in WCW in 1999. This guy's more in and out than the Hawk with your girl. Match 18, Nitro. IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship match. The champion is Jushin Liger versus Juventud Guerrera. Lots of titles randomly appearing on this episode of Ring of the Hawk. So it looks like we're going to have a cold open as both men are already in the ring. As soon as the bell rings, we see that Buzzkill starts marching his way down to the ring with a sign. So you can tell this is going to be a really serious, important matchup. 
Lycra and Guerrero start feeling each other out with some quick chain wrestling in the early game and it shuts down when Hoof and Toot hits a wheelbarrow bulldog on Lycra. Hoovey hits a Huracarana now which causes Lycra to fall to the outside. Hoove soon hits a graceful dive all the way out to the floor onto Lycra. It almost continues going badly for Lycra when he's caught on the top rope, but then he hits a big frog splash on Hooventu. This only gets him a two though. Lycra gets a kick to the gut from Guerrero, but this just pisses him off and he splits Hoovey in half with a total world backbreaker. Lycra with a Lycra bomb attempt, but Hoovey rolls him over for a pin and then both men start to trade back and forth with the pinfalls. No one is able to get the free. Hushin sends Mr. Juice onto the apron, who is able to hotshot Lycra and then he hits a very, very sloppy diving leg drop to a nailed Lycra. Hoover attempts a driver, but as Buzzkill gets up off the commentary desk, Houston insists Sam bags Hoover with a German suplex. Buzzkill causes a distraction on the outside, and while the ref isn't looking, Guerrero pulls a bottle of tequila out, and then he breaks the bottle over the head of Liger. How does the referee not feel all that alcohol that just splattered across his back? And how does he not see the broken glass all over the ring? All that aside, Hoover Toot wins the IWGP Junior Heavyweight title by a bottle of tequila. This match was very sloppy. It could have been so much more, especially with the fact they hyped up the title as a prestigious championship. And then we get this bird turd. And not to mention, he also lost the title. So it's an S for this episode of Ring of the Hawk. Match 19, WCW Thunder. You should fund the Liger vs. Chris Benoit. Before the match, Hooventoot, Le Parker and Psychosis join us on commentary. And Liger tries to invite them to the ring. The chain wrestling gets interrupted when Liger gets tossed into the referee. But to my surprise, there is no ref bump. Benoit struggles to power Liger up for the backslide attempt, but then again we get a pinfall exchange for the second match in a row. Benoit counters a German suplex attempt with some elbows, then Liger rebounds with a rolling wheel kick on the top of Chris's head. Now there's a suplex, but Liger disagrees and instead suplexes Benoit to the floor from the inside of the ring. Liger soon climbs up to the top and gives Benoit a dive to the outside. Yushin locks in an inverted surfboard for a little bit and then powers up Benoit for the brain buster, but Chris kicks out at one and a half. Liger with a kick out the corner and then attempts a tornado DDT but Chris counters by tossing him away and then they both go down for the double down with the clotheslines. Chris with some light offense on Liger. He hits a sidewalk backbreaker and when he comes back he starts hammering on Liger in the corner. He rebounds with a lariat to the back. Liger makes Benoit land on his nutsack on the top rope and then they go sailing with a big superplex. Just before the match can get any better, the park and psychosis start stomping on Jushin Liger and then the referee throws the match out. Chris Benoit comes to the aid of his opponent as the bell continues to ring and everyone's crying and falling on the floor. The match was definitely better than the last. Needed a little bit more time in my eyes and a pretty bad ending. But at least the match was watchable till the end. Let's give it a D. Match 20, WCW Nitro, IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship match. Hushin Thunder Liger vs Psychosis who's replacing Hoover Toot Guerrero the champion. Before the match we go backstage to Vince Russo's office. Hushin has a rematch clause for his title tonight and Hoover can't defend the title due to a broken arm. This was probably the weirdest number one contenders match I've ever seen. I also realised that these last three matches in this run are all in the same week. Anyway, so some quick back and forth chain wrestling to start off our championship match. Psychosis lands his feet off the turtle wheel and then just gets him sent over the top rope to the outside. Hushin fires up to do a suicide dive but he handsprings against the ropes and gives Psychosis a baseball slide. He then shortly thereafter gives Psychosis a diving splash to the floor and your mum's a whore. Big missile drop kick now from the Psychosis who only gets a two count. When he tries to argue with the referee he gives him a push and then the mini flare gives him a push and puts him on his ass like grass. The match continues like nothing happened and Psychosis gives Hushin an Irish whip into the barricade. Psychosis with a high wrist move from the top rope with the Frankensteiner but he only scores a 2 off that one. Psycho gets back to his feet off a submission attempt and then when he tries to go to the ropes, Liger gives him a kick in the ass and Psychosis crashes down face first off the top rope. Liger with the Mahi Stra Cradle and he's able to hold Psychosis down for the free and win back his title. The bell rings and immediately Lepart makes his way out to the ring with the aforementioned chair and wraps it around the head of Psychosis. This match was also pretty decent, not a lot of miscommunication from these two, as there was definitely some in that Benoit match. So let's end this multi-year run with a C. Alright, pretty interesting stuff. I feel like when it comes down to Liger's final grade, there's going to be one eye on what I've given to CM Punk. It feels like my YouTube channel exploded after I called CM Punk mid, so I can't really put Liger ahead of Punk for the fear of my life. But don't get me wrong, I was amazed to see some of the moves that he pulled off in 1992. But the point is he never got that popular with the US audiences. They liked it when he did a moonsault and then they just stopped paying attention to him again. So I think it's only fair for Hushin funded Liger to finish top of the C tier. It was a bit botchy at times and he was inconsistent but nonetheless impressive. And if you don't agree with that I'll show you my shiv. 